A little review from last unit, actually. Uh, you guys did a lot of solving proportions. Right, you did a lot of solving proportions. Anybody remember what these values were called right here? Whatever I plug in for A and D, what those were called. You wrote it as a theorem. Those were my extremes. extremes. Good, those are my extremes. And then the other two, whatever I plugged in here, were called my what? Means. All right. What I'm going to introduce to you now is a special proportion. A special proportion where the means are always the same. Always the same value. All right, same number, same variable, whatever. The means are always the same, and the extremes are different. Welcome to what's called a mean proportion, okay? A mean proportional, where the means are always the same, but the extremes are different. So right away in my first example, I'm saying, hey, can you guys set up and solve a mean proportion between 4 and 16? Here's what I'm asking. Oh, you want me to set up a mean proportion? That means my means are the same. And my extremes are different. In this case, the different extremes would be 4 and 16. All right, so find me a number that I can multiply by itself that's the same as 4 times 16. All right, we know how to solve these, right? How do you solve these proportions again? Quick reminder, 24. Cross multiply. Cross multiply. Here we go, everyone. X squared equals 64. On both sides, what are you doing? Taking the square root of both sides. I know I'm going to get a lot of eights, but nope. It's good, but not great. Why not? You took the square root in the previous example here, previous step. Eight's fine, but why not? What other number do you get out after you take the square root? The positive and yes, right? The negative. Look, look, look. You take negative eight, plug it in. What's negative eight times negative eight? All right, positive 64. Still works. Okay, so the answer here would be plus or minus eight. Most of the time, though, you guys know we got diagrams, right? We involve diagrams. So most of the time, the negative answer is not going to fly with us because we can't have a negative side length. So instead, what I'm asking, going to ask you for is the geometric mean. The geometric mean, which is the positive value out of these. All right? The geometric mean. What's the positive value? So what's the geometric mean between 15 and 20? Between 15 and 20. So I'm still looking for the mean proportion here. Set up a mean proportion. But now I only want the positive answer out when I ask for a geometric mean. So x and x, and my new extremes are 15 and 20. So as everyone cross multiplies, we get x squared equal to 300. And yes, you do take the square root of both sides. And just pay attention to the directions, though. Simplest radical form. And I don't feel bad because we worked all the last unit on this. That's why I'm having it in the directions again. So whether you want to do it individually right now or in your group, go ahead and break down radical 300 for me. Biggest perfect square, not the first one that's convenient for you. Biggest perfect square that goes into 300. 300, biggest perfect square. And then break that down for me. Okay, going back to you, what was the, uh, what 300 break down into? What were the two square roots you put it under? Uh, 13? Uh, plus or minus 10. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, back up, Cal. I'm just asking, break down 300. Oh, um, 100 and 30. There you go. 100 was the biggest perfect square. 
So we got 10 radical three, but I don't want the minus version here because I'm asking for the geometric mean, which is the positive value of this. So this is where we're going to stay right here, 10 radical three. Questions? I'm showing you this because these are the proportions you're going to set up today when we go back to triangles. You are going to set up a proportion where the means are always the same. Keep that in the back of your mind because I'm going to throw a lot of new vocab coming up here in a minute. So you are that's your goal today. Set up a proportion where the means are always the same and the extremes are different. All right. All right, let's do this. I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to go back to similar triangles. What I want you to do right now, draw me a nice big right triangle. Nice big right triangle here. I'm going to show you the diagram we're going to work with the next two days. Let's call this triangle ABC, where B is your right angle. Can you name these sides here for me? What's side AC called in a right triangle here? Hypotenuse. All right, so let's label it. You can just denote it HYP. There's your hypotenuse from A to C. Anybody know what the other two sides of a right triangle are called? Legs, all right? Make sure we call those legs. Leg. Leg. All right, I'm going to add, ask you to add in a segment to it now. From point B, from point B, can you draw an altitude? An altitude over to AC. So from point B, can you draw an altitude over to AC? Anybody want to remind myself and your classmates, what's this altitude supposed to do, Zach? Uh, it's supposed to connect the vertices. From point B to AC and form a what? Form right angles, correct. And call that point on uh, ACD. Call that point D there. So that altitude forms right angles. So make sure you label BD, that's an altitude. I'll just abbreviate it ALT. And do you see how you do you see how you broke the hypotenuse up into two segments? They're not congruent. They're not congruent. All right, but we're going to start referring to these two as segments. So the two pieces on the hypotenuse, we're going to refer to as a segment. You'll see where this comes in in a second. And I'm not going to get crazy with this, but how many total triangles are in this diagram? Total triangles. Three. Everyone agree? Three? The two small ones inside and the original one you created. Three. Correct? Three? All right. Uh, I'm not going to get go into it, but all three are similar to each other. All three of those are similar by angle angle. They have right angles and reflexive angles in common. I don't want to get into it too much. So if we know they're similar from the last unit, what do we know about their sides then? Corresponding sides. What do we know? If the triangles are similar, what do we know about their sides? No, they're not congruent. That's CPCTC. They're in proportion, right? That's what we learned. If the triangles are similar, the sides that match up are in the same ratio, correct? All right, I am going to show you, instead of having you got, instead of me saying, everyone see side BC in the big triangle? What would it match up with in triangle? ADB. It's going to get chaotic. All right. I still want you to match up the sides, but it's going to get tougher. So what I'm going to give you guys today is two devices that are going to help you match up sides. All right. Two devices. The first one, and I'm going to go through this slow, is called Hills. No I, I know. It's H-L-L-S. Hills. That is the proportion you set up. H- over L equals L over S. This will help you match up the sides so you can solve a proportion. So let's slowly go over what does each piece mean? H stands for, well, what's the only thing that starts with an H in my diagram? <laughs> hypotenuse. And we're all good. What the hypotenuse is? The hypotenuse of your big right triangle. That's, that's the one we label. What do you think L stands for? Right. Leg. And some of you may say, well, which leg? Whatever you have information about. Okay? 
you'll have information about one and probably not the other. So use the one you have information about. What do you think this L stands for? Leg. You ready? Same leg. Same. And how are you going to remember it's the same leg? What are these called in the proportion again? These are your means. You're going to be setting up mean proportions here. Hill stop. Hills and sass are all mean proportions. Whatever you plug in for the mean should always be the same. Everyone here. Yes? Hills. And I'm going to introduce a second one in a minute. Means are always the same. So this is same leg. Same leg. What do you think the S stands for? What do we label on our diagram that starts with S? Segment. Segment. Now we got a problem, don't we? What's your, go ahead, ask your question. What are you going to ask? We got two of them. Which one? Good question. We are going to use the segment adjacent next to the leg in the, in the proportion. So adjacent to the leg used. So let me quiz you real quick. Let's say we're setting up this proportion and we plugged in leg BC into it. Leg BC, leg BC. What segment would I have to use then? If I'm using leg BC in my proportion, what segment would I need? What's the one next to it, adjacent to it? Segment? Segment? BD is not a segment, it's an altitude. CD, okay, segment CD. Everyone good? All right, it depends on what leg we're using. That's the segment we'll use. So there's hills. Unfortunately, though, it may not work because you don't have enough information. So this is where the second one comes into play. And this is called SAS. S over A equals A over S. SAS. What do you think S stands for? Segment, either one, doesn't matter. Segment, either one. Oh, what do you think A stands for? Whatever the altitude length is. And again, you've got to know where these are in the diagram. What do you think the other A stands for? Well, same altitude. You only have one in the diagram, and the means are always the same, remember. All right, there's only one altitude in there. And what's the other S stand for? What do you think? Same segment or other segment? Extremes are different. So it's got to be the other segment. Okay? It's got to be the other segment. Extremes are always different. The means are the same in Hills and Sass. Just keep that in mind. Whoa, whoa. Before I go on to the examples. This is all great, this Hills and Sass. And once you get a, to pick up on it, it's awesome. Very easy to use. You got to have this diagram, though. What, was, what type of triangle was the original one I had you make? A right triangle, and what's got to be drawn inside the right triangle? An altitude to the hypotenuse. You've got to have this diagram or hills and sass is no use. It's only for this type of diagram. All right, let's try to use it before I let you go on your own in your groups. We're going to do these two together. Do I have a right triangle? The, original, the big one is a right triangle. Everyone see the altitude that's drawn in. Okay, so I can use hills or sass. This is where you may have difficulty today. Which one should I use, right? Which one should I use? Let me make it easy on you. First question you always ask yourself, is the altitude involved? First of all, name the altitude up there using letters. What's, the, what's my altitude in that diagram? BD. Is it labeled at all? So guess what? SAS doesn't work. You don't have the darn altitude. So you can't use SAS. So the only other option I'm going to have is hills. Everyone good? Why I can't use SAS? I don't know anything about BD. So here we go. I'll just write out hills. Sorry. All right. Now I'm going to turn it over to you guys. The H in hills stands for... Seven, what's the H in hills stand for? The hypotenuse. And when we say hypotenuse, that's of the big triangle. How long 
is the hypotenuse of triangle ABC. How long is hypo of that hypotenuse? 21. How long is the hypotenuse in the large right triangle? 12. 3 plus 9. Everyone good? 12. I'm going to go slow. You can go ahead of me if you'd like. L in hill stands for 13. Leg. And there's always two legs, but you want to pick the one you got info about. So which, what value can I plug in for leg here? 20? What's that? Y. Y, yep. Equals. The other L is for leg, but it's the same leg. Means are the same. So I put a Y there. Now here's where you're going to get a little challenge, some of you. S for segment. You got three and you got nine. Which one do you use? What did we write? The one next to the leg we're using, which is Y. So do I want to use three or nine? Which one's the segment adjacent to the leg? 20, actually, let me pick somebody new. Four. Which would be what length? Do I want three or nine here for my segment? Oh, sorry, you want three. I want three, which is adjacent to the Y. Everyone good? Setting up hills. All right, there you go. Work your magic now. Work your magic. Y squared equals 36. I take the square root of both sides. Do I need to worry about plus and minus here? Diagram, right? Diagram. I don't want to worry about the minus version when I have a diagram. So just six. Questions from you guys? All right, one more together before I let you go. Is the altitude involved? Yeah, it's labeled now. It's labeled. So now I want to use SAS. If you did use Hills, you'd find out pretty quick you don't have enough information. All right, what's the first S stand for in SAS? First S, 16. First S in SAS? Uh, four. four, segment, yep. Could you could have said 12? Yeah, that's fine too. 12 could go there. What's the A stand for? Uh, eight. <clears throat> sure, yep. What's the A stand for in SAS? Which is labeled as what? X, altitude, X. Means are always the same, and there's only one altitude in the diagram. And the other S for 21, other S? 12, the other segment. Again, if you want to flip-flop the 12 and the 4, it's still correct. So here we go. X squared equals 48. And I believe, yep, we do simplest radical form here. So I'll give you a second to break down 48. Biggest perfect square, four is not the biggest. Keep going. Even if you, even when you find one, try a couple more after. Okay, what's 16, what, yeah, I will give you that one. Eight. What did 48 break down into? What and what? Good job for a final answer of? Good work. Four radical three. Okay. Any questions? You'll see six questions that you're going to do on your own or in your group, whatever you, whatever you prefer. All right. You got about, I'm going to give you about three minutes and I'm going to call on six different people for the proportion and the final answer. Anything in a radical, simplify it. All right, go ahead. First job, should it be Hills or Sass? All right, three. Here we go. Part A. What do we use, Hills or Sass? Sass. Sass, proportion. Um, X, six, six. Um, I get it now. Uh, nine. 
Wait, all that part is my bad. Four. Four? And what was the X? Nine. Nine. Questions? Now remember, when everyone gives us gives me their proportion, the extremes are could be switched. All right, so just realize that extremes can always be switched. All right, there's uh, part A. Next person up. How about part B? Uh, Eleven. Hills or stats? And I'll ask somebody again. Seven. Sass. Sass. Yep. Uh, and proportion. Everyone all right where the 10 came from, even though it's not on the diagram, 50 minus 40. Good job. And then 20. Yep, it was a perfect, 400 a perfect square, so just take the square root of it. You don't need to break it down. It's already a perfect square. Good job. Uh, let's go on to C. We're working pretty nice here. Uh, 15, hills or sass for C? Hills, all right. Proportion? Looks good. X equals? 10, perfect square, 100, we're done. Question so far, are we all right? All right, D. Uh, 14, D. We don't have a 14. Uh, nope, not that either. Oops, why do oh, it's five, never mind. All right, go ahead, D. Uh, Hills or Sass? Over x equals x over 9. Yep, 12 over x equals x over 9. Now, this was 1 you had to break down. You got the square root of 108, which you should have broken down. And what do we end up with? 2 radical 27. 2 radical 27. Didn't find the biggest one. There's bigger than 4. Bigger than 4. It should have been 36 was the biggest one. All right, 36 goes into 108, which is 6 radical 3. Okay. All right, everyone stop up here on the board. All right, because I feel like I should show this to you. And you and I can show it to you because I think you can handle it. So let me just go over Stella's mistake right now. All right, so you guys understand, because I think this is a concern for some of you, which is how do I know I picked the biggest one? All right, and you don't want to keep checking on your calculator. So here it is. Here's how you can tell if you picked the biggest one or not. So Stella picked four. What do you have to multiply four by? Is it 27? Is it 27? Here's how you can tell. Look at the second radical. Is there a perfect square that could go into 27? Yes. That means you didn't get the biggest one. If there is a perfect square that goes into the second radical, you did not pick the biggest one originally. Good? That's why you could do, ready? 36 and three. Is there a perfect square that goes into three? Then you pick the biggest one. Everyone good on that? It's not a trick, it's math. All right, if you wanna know if you pick the biggest perfect square, look at the second radical, and if no other perfect squares go into it, you're good to go. All right, so just a little tip there. Six radical three. All right, how about E? Uh, 13, Calum, go ahead, 13. Whoa, hills or sass? Sass, good. What's your proportion? And you got a perfect square there, so it was x equals 12. And finally, the last one. You guys are doing a great job here. Uh, let's go. 22. Hills or sass? Sass. Sass. Looks good. Proportion. 25 over x equals x over 36. And that also was a perfect square, and you got x equals 60. 60. 3,600 was a perfect square. Any issues? Bless you. This is not going to be a one-day topic. We're going to continue to work on it tomorrow, all right, because I know it's not easy just after one day, but you guys have plenty of time now. Go ahead and start the assignment on the next couple pages. Show work, please. Show work if you would like credit tomorrow. Show work. You know where the answers are if you want to check them.